Hey, my name is Charlie, and in this video, we're going to be trying to find the most probable distribution of a fictional test, given some information about the test, right? So let's say we have a test out of 50 points, all right? 50 point test with an average score of, let's say, 40 points. Average score of 40 points. And let's say we also know that the standard deviation of this test is 8.5 points. <clears throat> Now, let's say we also know that 20% of the students got less than 25 points. So, really rough test. <clears throat> Anyways, so when most people think of a grade distribution, me included, we think of a bell curve. However, that probably won't be the most probable distribution in this case. And why is that? Well, it's because, well, a bell curve would predict that some students got over 50 points, and that's just not possible. Another possible distribution could be a bimodal distribution looks up like this, if I quickly draw it out, like so with its two peaks. There we go. However, in today's video, we're going to be trying to find the most probable distribution of this fictional test with this information provided. All right, moving on. So this is a pretty complex problem. Let's do a, little, let's do a simpler one first. All right, let's say that we have, I don't know, uh 10 students 10 students n is equal to 10 10 students all right and we have a test out of three points with scores ranging from one two and three you know now let's say that we also know that the average score of this test would be two so a possible grade distribution could be i don't know zero students get a one 10 students get a two zero students get a score of three now, another possible grade distribution could be uh, one where three students get a score of one, four students get a score of two, and three students get a score of three. All right, now, just from looking at it, it's pretty clear that the second distribution of three, four, three is a lot more likely to occur than this first one over here where every single student gets a score of 10. Because why? Well, every single student needs to get a score of 10. Well, in this other distribution, this 343 distribution, well, there's multiple ways that it, it could it, that this distribution could occur. There we go. We can allocate, for example, uh, three of our 10 students to score a score of three. So for our first of our three students, we have um, 10 options, then nine options, then eight options. And the order in which we select these three students does not matter. So we'll just divide this by three factorial. Now, the students that scored a score of 2. Well, we have 4 of these students that scored a score of 2. Our first of 4, well, there's going to be 7 options of students. Then 6. Then 5. Then 4. There we go. Divided by 4 factorial. Because the order in which we select these 4 students does not matter. Alright. Now, the people who scored a score of 1. First student, 3 options. 2 options. Then 1 option. Again, divided by 3 factorial, or does not matter, which we select these students. All right, we can simplify this up a little bit. So we have 10 times 9 times 8, all the way to times 1. That'll just be n factorial. Divided by, well, the number seems to get a score of 3 factorial. So n, 3 factorial, times the number seems that get a score of 2 factorial. 2 factorial, times the number seems that get a score of 1 factorial. <coughs> All right, so um, what is this? Well, this is the number of ways that 10 students, right, could get a uh, could be put in a specific grade distribution, all right? And why is that important? Well, in a future video, hopefully one that's coming out very soon after this one, right, we're going to be using Python, more specifically the library, SciPy, and even more specifically the modules Optimize and Minimize to try to maximize this function over here. Why do you want to maximize it? Well, if we maximize the number of ways, right, that, um, that the num number of ways that a, that a possible distribution could occur, right, we're able to find the most likely distribution, all right? And of course, by then, we're, we're going to be inputting this uh, additional data, like the average, their deviation of 20%, blah, blah, blah. All right. So let's apply what we have here to our original question, our 50-point test, right? So again, well not again, but in our original question, we don't know how many students are taking this test. So we'll just leave that as n factorial divided by, well, 
It's gonna be a 50 point test with scores ranging from zero all the way to 50, right? So for um, numbers that get a score of zero factorial, like so numbers that get a score of one factorial all the way to the number of students that get a perfect score 50 factorial. All right, so once again, in that future video, we're gonna be using these other informations, this average standard deviation and a percentage of the students that get a, uh, that get a score underneath a specific mark using Python to find the actual, actual most probable distribution of this fictional data set, fictional test, all right. But uh, for today's uh, video, we're gonna expand more on this over here. This right here, the number of ways that our N students, right, could be distributed, not distributed, could be in a specific grade distribution, all right? Now let's say that our test, our 50 point test is big, all right? Let's say that a million students take this test, all right? Well, we're gonna have a million factorial in the numerator, and that is a really big number, all right? Uh, even a 64-bit uh, floating point scientific notation computer probably can't read that. Yeah, it's, it's a big number, all right? So for our n factorial, we want to find a way to approximate this function over here because these factorials get really big if we have big tests, right? So to do this, we'll be using something called Stirling's approximation, but we'll get to that in a second, all right? First off, let's think about this n factorial, right? When we think of factorials, right, we should think of a log of any base, but for simplicity, let's just use natural log. And why is this? Well, let me show you. So natural log of n factorial, right? Well, the natural log of products will just be the sum of the natural log of the products, right? So that'll be natural log of n plus natural log of n minus one plus natural log of n minus two, all the way to natural log of one right which is which is just me equal to zero all right <clears throat> all right so what does this do hmm well let's take a look let's let's let's, let's graph this out all right so quickly just gonna graph this out one here two here three here four here and there we go so natural log of one just zero natural log of two we could just approximate to look at something like that then three then four, then n. Let me actually expand that over there. All right, and we could draw a curve of best fit through this, right? So starting out one, something like this. Now, um, in integration, right, we want to find the area underneath the curve, right, by taking the sum of these rectangular blocks, right? However, Right, we wanna, by, by taking the sum, I mean, we wanna approximate the area underneath the curve by taking that sum. However, we want to actually find the areas of these sums to add them together to approximate, right? Well, we want to use the area underneath this curve, right? To approximate the sum of these areas of these rectangles, right? Which we could then set equal to as an approximation to our natural log of n factorial. Now this is something called Stirling's approximation. All right, so, so we're gonna be using this, right? So we have our blocks here, natural log of n plus natural log of n minus one, all the way to natural log of one, right? All right, so how does this help us? Well, we can approximate that sum over there with the integral, the area underneath this curve over here, right? This curve over here. So that'll, that would be an approximation. Again, Stirling's approximation, I don't know much about it myself. I researched a little bit for today's video, but I need to do some more in-depth research. All I know is that it is really useful in statistical analysis in the future. So seems really cool. I'll look into that more in the future. All right, so we could approximate this natural log of n factorial as well, integral as integral from one to n as of natural log of x d x thanks to the Stirling's approximation. All right, so now it's pretty simple. Now it's just gonna be integration by parts, no big deal, you know? It's just gonna be the, I remember this by the product rule, right? So duv is gonna be equal to u dv plus v du integral 
integral integral all right so let's set u to be equal to our natural log of x right therefore du will be equal to 1 over x dx no big deal then we have dv is going to be equal to um let's just set dv to be equal to i don't know uh dx right so therefore v will be equal to x there you go so what does this do right well our integral of u dv right that would be equal to the integral of natural log x dx so we want to get that on one side so we can solve for that right so that'd be natural uh integral of u dv is going to be equal to well the integral of duv will just be uv minus well the integral of b du well du is just going to be one over x dx right and b is going to be equal to x so x over x will just be 1, so there's the integral of 1 dx, so that'll be equal to uv minus x. There you go. Now uv will just be, well, v is going to be equal to x, u is going to be natural log of x, so it'll just be x natural log of x minus x. There you go. So let's put that in, into our approximation like so. So x natural log of x minus x, and this would be from 1 to n. And that'll be equal to n natural log of n minus n. Now, what we have here, right? We have 1, right? So natural log of 1 is just going to be equal to 0. So 0 times 1, just 0. So we're going to be subtracting this by, well, minus, 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 minus 1 will just be plus 1. Like so, but once again, this is just an approximation, all right? And also, n is a huge number, all right? So for uh, simplicity's sake, let's just forget this plus 1. There you go. So using Sterling's approximation and integration by parts, uh, we approximate natural log of n factorial to be roughly n natural log of n minus n. All right, so how does this help us, right? If we go back over here to this function over here, right? We want to maximize this using Python in our future video, right? Well, think about it. A natural log is continuous and increasing, right? So if we take the natural log of this, right? If we maximize the natural log of this function over here, right? There, we're gonna also maximize the function inside. If we're maximizing the function inside, we're able to, we're able to find the uh, grade distribution with the most possible ways of occurring, and that'll be the most probable distribution. Of course, this is ignoring those additional facts, the average standard de deviation and 20%, that scored underneath that 25 point margin, but we'll get into that in the next video. All right, so um, yeah, so that, that is very, very nice. All right, so let us just rewrite this down here. So natural log of n factorial divided by, it'll just be the product from zero to 50 of n i factorial. Cool. So once again, with these uh, natural logs, we're able to separate the numerator and denominator into addition and subtraction. So that'd be very, very nice. So natural log of n um, factorial, that'll be minus, right? Now we have the natural log of these products from zero to 50 of n factorial, right? Of the number of students from zero to 50 factorial. We're gonna have the products of that, right? So we're gonna be adding those up in the denominator. So that'll be minus, summation from 0 to 50, right, of natural log n i factorial. Cool. All right, now from here, we can apply our Stirling's approximation from before, this one over here, into here. So natural log of n factorial, that'll be approximately n natural log of n minus n and we can do the same with this uh summation over here so minus summation i uh, is equal to 0 to 50 of well that'll be n i natural log of n i minus n i all right cool now what can we do from here well we could look into this right in the summation over here this one over here we see this negative over here negative over here right negative negative makes a positive so we can split that apart like so n natural log of n minus n 
minus summation of i is equal to 0 to 50 of ni natural log of ni plus the summation of i is equal to 0 to 50 of ni. All right, so now looking a little bit closer at the summation over here, the summation from 0 to 50 of ni. Well, if you remember, the um, ni is going to be the number of students that got a specific grade, right? So i is going to be going from 0 to 50, right? So this will basically be the sum of, well, number of students that got a score of 0, number of students that got a score of 1, all the way to the number of students that got a score of 50. It's going to be the sum of all of that. So what is that? Number, total number of students, just n, right? So this is going to be n. And we have a negative n here, positive n here. We could cancel those out like so. Big voice crack. And now we're left with n natural log n minus the summation from i is equal to 0 to 50 of n i natural log of n i. All right, well, what we could do here is we could introduce the summation to this n natural log of n by uh, the same idea, right? How the summation from 0 to 50 of n i is going to be equal to n. So that'll just be a product of the summation i is equal to 0 to 50 of n i natural log of n minus the summation of i is equal to 0 to 50 n natural log of n i. All right, so we want to combine these together, right? So if we negate this first summation over here by uh, taking the reciprocal of this natural log, well, if we take the reciprocal of this natural log, it's the same thing as just negating it. So that works out. And now we can combine our two summations into, well, negative um, uh, summation uh, is equal to 0 to 50 of, um, <clears throat> of our ni, ni, I forgot the i there, ni natural log of ni over n, right? And uh, we can also multiply this by n over n. So we're able to uh, so we're able to get a like value inside. So it'll be just negative n summation of i is equal to zero to fifty of um, n i over n natural log of n i over n. There we go. So this n i over n, well, that should be the number of students that got a certain grade over the total number of students, right? So that'll just be the percent that a specific um, that that'll be the percent of the student population that a specific grade has, all right? So uh, we could just call this a variable. Let's just call it, I don't know, pi. So it's going to 0 to 50. So that'll just be pi. So again, pi is just going to be equal to ni over n, natural log of pi. There we go. So cool deal. <clears throat> so very, very cool. We use students approximation, we use integration by parts, and uh, the usefulness of logarithms. And we're going to be using this in a future video, along with Python, SciPy, and the modules inside of SciPy to find the most probable distribution with these other um, variables concerning, with these, with concerning these other variables of the average standard deviation and um, how 20% of the students got less than 25 points. So. See you then. Thank you guys so much for watching and bye.